So he's me. right next to Ashley, and then you right there, Between and then I'll be on me and there. Ashley. Yep. Perfect. And then I'll, be on I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. Let him know. All right.
Test. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Girls and Women in Sports Luncheon. Yeah, big clap. Yeah, big applause. There we go. My name is Derek Cheney. I'm the Director of Activities and Athletics for Douglas County Schools. I'm excited to be here. It's one of my favorite days of the entire year. So glad you could spend some time with us today uh, to celebrate uh, all the accomplishments and accolades of these uh, young female student athletes. So a um, couple logistical things before we get going. We are going to uh, close that here uh, in a minute or two, so uh, the, the food will be done. So, uh, but you have desserts at the table. Um, restrooms just go straight back this way if you need to uh, during the uh, presentations or whatever. We, we, we're getting rid of 130. We've got a lot to celebrate, so hopefully you can just sit back and relax and uh, and enjoy the time. The drinks will still be in here, the water and the lemonade and such. So um, we'd like to start this uh, with a video that our communications department made um, with our MC today, Ariel Arsudo from Nine News. So um, please direct your attention and we'll get going on the video. everyone, I'm Ariel Orsudo, sports reporter and anchor for Nine News in Denver. I'm so excited to be the host for this year's Girls and Women in Sports Luncheon. Sports play a really important role for a lot of people's high school experiences, and for good reason. There are so many positive things that sports provide. Commitment, connection, teamwork, and balancing academics with athletics. We're celebrating all types of athletes today, from track and field and cross country, to basketball, volleyball, softball, swimming, and cheerleading in palms. These young women have excelled in their chosen sport, and that's why we're honoring them today at the Girls and Women in Sports Luncheon. Let's meet our honorees. Big round of applause for Ariel and Tommy, thank you. You know, there's so much behind the scene work, uh, scene work that goes on with this, with this event, and uh, you know, Tommy's up there helping us and Joe, and I appreciate you guys helping and, uh, and coordinate that video. And of course, we'll get to uh, Ariel here in a little bit uh, so you guys can hear from her. Um, just a few things, a few people I wanna thank today. Um, hopefully as you were eating, you saw that there's no way I could get up here and thank everyone. It's just impossible to do, but I, uh, I do feel the need to call out a few certain people um, while I'm up here. Uh, if you've ever done some event planning, uh, there's quite a bit that goes into event planning. And um, this individual plans this, uh, this monster of event. Uh, uh, we have a team, but the whole team would agree that she takes the monster share of this. And uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Miss Sue Dakovich over there. So Sue, if you can... Uh, A few other people I want to recognize. Um, it's so important, uh, you know, in the state of Colorado and in the Douglas County Schools to have your state organization and state association uh, be a part and support what you do. Um, and CHASA, the Colorado High School Activities Association, uh, has been so supportive. They're always advocating for activities and athletics. Um, you saw the benefits that, that when kids get involved with activities and athletics, how well they do. And uh, we, we have a couple people from CHASA today um, we, we have uh, Sarah and Mike. Mike Kruger is our, um, he's our commissioner, brand new commissioner of Chassis, so the, the CEO, if you will. So Mike, would you please stand and be recognized? Uh, a few more recognitions. Uh, we, we couldn't do it without the uh, support of our, our district leadership, and it starts with our Board of Education and our, our superintendent. And uh, so, you know, our, our board has been so supportive. Um, you know, being a school district, public school, we do have limitations and boundaries, but man, every time we can try to support activities athletics, we're, we're trying to do that. And uh, just want to recognize a few people on stage here. Uh, David Ray, one of our board directors, appreciate all your support. Uh, the the uh, 
Activities and Athletics Office of Douglas County Schools, we do this uh, in partnership with the Douglas County Foundation. And the foundation has a whole team of people that they have, and they were here early setting up, along with uh, a lot of our other um, you know, admin assistants were here early. Uh, but, but Ashley Summers of the foundation, we, we couldn't do this and get this nice venue and get this uh, um, you know, financial support if we didn't have the help of the foundation. So Ashley, thank you for your support of this event. And then one more thank you just to uh, Cherry Hills for hosting us today. Um, just we really enjoy this venue and, and the view, and it, it works out perfect for our event. So uh, they've been really such a pleasure to work with. So thank you to Cherry Hills as well. Okay, and I'll get off the mic here in a few, and we'll get on with things. But I do want to um, just put this in perspective uh, for we have for all we have 90 girls here, right? Not all of them couldn't make it, but we have. Uh, nine middle schools, nine high schools are represented. We have the top five from each of those, so 90. Um, you know, of course, we run the numbers and data. We had uh, close to 6,000 uh, female student athletes between middle school and high school last year. Um, so you, you math whizzes out there, 90 of close to 6,000, like, we're going to celebrate the top 2% today in our school district. So uh, let's get a big hand for that top 2% today. <laughs> Um, your, your schools, your coaches, your ADs, uh, they recognize the contributions, the time and the effort that you guys put in. Um, and we just appreciate all you've done. Parents, we appreciate your support. We couldn't do it without you. I mean, it, it's so hard. You know, uh, I know from when they're youth and taking them to all the youth stuff and, and, and the money it takes and the time it takes and, you know, driving here, driving there. Um, so we, we appreciate you as parents. So one more applause for our parents. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's go on with the program. Um, we are so fortunate to have um, you know, a, a strong uh, female role model, a, a leadership in our district. Um, Aaron Kane has been a leader in this district for a while, whether it's been at uh, a school or in our district or interim a couple years ago. She uh, took over the full-time superintendent role uh, last year, and she's just been a pleasure to work with. She's so supportive of activities and athletics. Uh, I still remember to this day, one of the first changes she made was to support um, our coaches in activities and athletics. Like one of the first decisions, it was, it was great. So I, I know where, where she stands and how she supports and knows the importance of activities and athletics. So uh, could you please give a, a big warm welcome for our superintendent, Aaron Kane. Good morning, everyone. First of all, how about a huge round of applause for Derek Cheney, who has done an amazing job leading this. Thank you so much for being here today to help us honor the amazing girls and women who have excelled in sports here in the Douglas County School District. We could not be more proud. I'm thankful to the foundation of Douglas County Schools DCSD Athletic and Activities led by Derek Cheney and our generous event sponsors for making today a reality. And thank you to each one of you for being here today to help us honor these incredible athletes. It's so important for us to come together to celebrate the athletic accomplishments, leadership, character, and academic work of the young ladies that will be honored here today. And thank you for all of the parents that are here with us as well. We know you have been supporting your young athletes um, all of this time, and we're very grateful to you for doing that and helping them grow into the amazing young women that they are. As you know, participating in athletics is about so much more than winning and losing. Each one of you has gained the skill sets from sports that will benefit you throughout your entire life. Qualities such as character, teamwork, critical thinking and decision making, discipline, empathy, self-confidence, perseverance, leadership skills, and so much more. Most importantly, you've learned how to fail and stand right back up again and go right back to it and do it again until it's where you want it to be. That skill will take you so far in life. What you have learned in sports will help you succeed in whatever, you, whatever path you choose, whether that's college, career, military, or another pathway. I encourage you to take what you have learned from sports and use it to pay it forward. 
to help others and to mentor other young women, just like you, as they're growing into their roles. Each one of you is a true role model, and you have so much to offer in this world. As a district and personally, we're incredibly proud of each one of you. I am so honored to be able to be here tonight to share in today, to share in this important day. Um, congratulations to each one of our amazing young women. You are truly awesome and your future will be incredibly bright. Thank you again for being here this morning and for supporting this great event. Okay, um, let's get on with the uh, talent in our own backyard here that we have in Douglas County Schools. And we're going to start with uh, uh, someone that was uh, a Thunder Ridge grad. Um, I don't remember the exact year, but we're going to get going here, Abby. So let me, let me read uh, Abby Wainer's uh, bio, please. Abby is a former Thunder Ridge High School basketball player who led the Grizzlies to three consecutive state championships. Twice, Abby was selected as Miss Colorado Basketball, Player of the Year, and First Team All-State. Her senior year, she was a McDonald's and Gatorade National Player of the Year and had a single game scoring record of 61, 61 points and averaged, averaged over 32 points a game. Abby is considered one of the best, if not the best, female basketball player in Colorado's history. She was an All-American Division I women's basketball player while playing at Duke University where she earned a degree in English. She was a three-time USA basketball gold medal winner with world championship in Tunisia, Puerto Rico, and Russia. She was drafted by the WNBA's New York Liberty and spent several years as a sports broadcaster for ESPN. The attributes of a successful athlete have propelled Abby very quickly to achievements within the business world. Abby began her career in commercial real estate seven years ago and currently works for Jones Lang LaSalle in Denver. Abby is now a marathon runner, qualifying and running in the Boston Marathon in 22 and 23. Abby remains active in the Colorado High School Sports Association as a broadcaster for high school championship games, a public speaker for local high schools, and participates on the Thunder Ridge High School Hall of Fame Committee. I tell you what, it was hard to pare down her accolades. I think I left like two-thirds of them out, but... Uh, we are so fortunate to have uh, Abby here. So uh, a big uh, warm welcome for Abby Wainer Bottolotto. Uh, Ariel, I wish we talked. I'm wearing my Nikes next oh. time. Yeah, yeah, these heels aren't quite as comfortable. Um, Oh, Adidas, my bad. <laughs> I, what an honor to be here today. Um, you know, I know there have been several um, people that have already been thanked, but I've got to say, standing here today with a lens um, on the past, it's a thankless job, um, what the leaders of, of this uh, school district do. And I can tell you, this is not normal. Uh, what we get here uh, in Douglas County, this is not typical. You don't see this across the country. Um, so there's some really special people that are leading the way. So thank you all for having me here today. Um, I, I wish I could say that time management was something I learned from uh, my days playing sports and being a student athlete, but unfortunately it's not. Derek, I apologize. I, I do have to leave a little bit early today to get to um, a meeting. Um, and all of you athletes can understand that the, the um, importance of time management. So uh, do as I say, not as I, not as I do. Um, I, I just want to begin by telling you how happy I am to be here today. Throughout the course of my career, um, I've had the opportunity to speak to some really impressive groups of people, whether it's national broadcast, college basketball games, meetings with CEOs, I've, I've traveled the world playing basketball, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Um, there is no greater joy or fulfillment than I feel than being here at home speaking to high school girl athletes. Uh, so thank you for the honor of allowing me to be up here today. It is truly my favorite group of people. Um, if there are any of my former referees in the crowd today, they can attest I am never short on words. 
Uh, it's a personal attribute that got me several technicals throughout the course of my career. So I will try to keep this a little bit brief, uh, more brief than I was when I was on the court. Um, so this is really personal for me on so many levels. I grew up in Highlands Ranch. Um, I went to Thunder Ridge High School, my Heritage Eagle husband. Um, and I now live 10 minutes away from where I grew up in Weatherstone. It was awesome, a quick seven minute drive here today. We have two young girls, Ella is five, um, Annie is three. And last night we decided to go to Mountain Vista High School, I see Kira in the audience here today, um, to watch the Crosstown rivalry game of Mountain Vista versus Thunder Ridge. And on the way there, we had a very deep conversation about the merits of a grizzly versus an eagle versus a jag. Because to the young kids, the mascots, they, they matter. <laughs> um, when we walked in the gym, we were kind of standing in the corner, and uh, all the parents in here, you guys will understand this, we were a hot mess walking in that gym. Uh, I had probably 12 bags that my girls wanted me to bring, like a sparkly purse that I think was from like my homecoming, um, a backpack, we had coats, we had jackets. And right when we walk in the gym, Ella, my five-year-old, turns to me and grabs this like Nike backpack. And I had no idea what was in it, candy, stickers, like who knows what's in the depths of those kids' bags. Sports bags are far worse. Um, and she sits down on the floor, the game is going on, and she pulls off her snow boots, takes out of her bag her basketball shoes. Uh, they're purple and blue, and they have like a little monster on them, I think. So when she heard that we were going to a basketball game, she immediately thought that she was suiting up. Uh, <laughs> grabbed her gear, I had no idea, and she hauled it all the way to the gym. And she put on her shoes, stood up. Uh, I have to say, being a former Grizzly, she has a Grizzly shirt. It's a Memphis Grizzly shirt, but she, she wore it uh, because of the Thunder Ridge Grizzlies. And um, her and Annie were standing there watching these 10 girls play on the court, and I was watching them watch you. It, it makes me emotional right now. I turned to my husband and I said, I have no idea. It's, this is a Thursday night, I'm exhausted, and here I am completely overwhelmed with emotion and I don't know why. Um, so as I thought about that, I wanted to share why that was the case with all of the female athletes that are here today. Um, when I was Ella's age, Kira heard this a week ago, so hopefully you're not too sick of it, but um, my dream was to play in the NBA. I grew up watching Kobe Bryant, Jay Williams, Steve Nash, um, they were the players that I watched when I was young. As I got older, women's college hoops got a little bit more relevant. Uh, the Tennessee Lady Vols, they were the team to beat back in the day, so I got to watch Shamika Holtzclaw growing up. In fact, just yesterday, I went to text a colleague whose name is Pat, and I opened up my phone, I was scrolling down, and I almost accidentally clicked on, on Pat Summit's number. Um, it still stops me in my tracks when I see a legend's name just so casually sitting in my phone. Um, I know a lot of the, the girls in this room today are probably a little bit too young to know who Pat Summit was, uh, but she was the head coach of the Tennessee Lady Vols, and uh, make no mistake, she's an integral reason why we're all here today. But regardless, I, I went to Duke uh, because I wanted to be in the NBA, and of course I had a fascination with Coach K and his program, which was the guys team. Now, I, I'm not here today to tell all of the, the female athletes just how lucky we are to be in this room because thank goodness that ship has sailed. We now have the same opportunity that our, our boy counterparts do. So that's not the message that I wanna to give today. Uh, but I do think it's really important for all the girls in this room that to know where you're going, you have to know where we've been. Me and my teammates, and, and Derek, when I hear you list off um, you know, those stats, I, I just sit there and, and what I think about are, are my teammates. Um, I, I just wanna share that and say how important that is and none of us are here today just because of our, our own accolades, right? It, it takes a village. And um, in fact, last night at the Thunder Ridge game, I briefly for two minutes saw my high school teammate who I haven't seen in 15 years. Uh, and it was a really special moment for us. So uh, keep, keep the friends that are in this room that are on your teams close because they will be influential people throughout the rest of your life. Uh, but me and my teammates, we knew that the, the women who were coaching us and leading our teams, that they were part of the Title IX movement. They were the reason that we were able to play basketball. Now, I know that that's a generation away, and again, I'm, I'm so grateful for that, that, that we're talking about a different era of female athletics. Um, I'll, I'll address the girls in a second, but first, there's obviously a number of boys and men in this room. Um, now, I realize this is girls and women in sports day, but everybody in this room has a mother, a sister, or a friend who is a girl. Um, you know, it, it's been researched and proven that communities um, 
in, in the lowest trenches of poverty, that there, there's one factor that can lift them out of poverty, and it's furthering girls' education. Um, and now, obviously, that's not necessarily what we're talking about today. Um, but to the boys and the men in this room, yes, we expect you to be our allies, and you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But if we need to make it selfish, we are all better when girls and young women have equal access to sports, to education, to some, it's health and safety, to others, it's jobs. And if any of you girls want to talk about that, come find me. And the other day, my husband was on a text thread with a group of about 15 guys that he's known for 10 years. And uh, somebody sent a text about how the WNBA is really pushing to get chartered jets for their players. They made the comment that the WNBA loses more money than they make. Somebody on that text thread snidely replied, what's the WNBA? And I was standing next to my husband. Without thinking, he types out a response and he says, it's the league my wife was drafted to play in and hopefully your daughters will be one day too. I, I've never been so proud and I was prepared for him to lose 15 friends. But instead, you should have seen the likes and the little hearts that were tagged to that message. Uh, it was pretty cool, and that guy is a total idiot. <laughs> uh, now, now to the girls. Uh, again, I cannot tell you how meaningful it is to sit next to you and hear about the future of your careers. Um, you all have a massive responsibility. And Aaron touched on this. Our job is to leave that door just a little bit wider for those that come behind us. You're here not just because of your accomplishments in sports, but because of your accomplishments in the classroom, in the community, and with your relationships. Your legacy will not end in high school. And in fact, that's when it's just beginning, middle school, high school. You are the women that are going to open that door just a little bit wider for the little Ellas wearing purple monster basketball shoes watching you play. So that was exactly what made me so emotional last night. Kira, I can't tell you the, the pride it brings me to watch you and your teammates, um, the way that you represent yourself and your family and your team. Um, I, I see the future for you, and it is so bright. And I have had the benefit of getting to know Kira, and I cannot wait to get to know the rest of you in this room. So a few thoughts I'll leave you with um, as you stay within the lines of Douglas County or for those of you that are going beyond. And you might come back sometimes in your parents' basement, but that's, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Always be in the room. Raise your hand, step up, and give yourself that chance. Because if you're not in the room, that chance might pass you by. Surround yourself with people who are better than you. You are the average of your five closest friends. Choose wisely, and make sure the ones that you choose are raising the bar. And that switch, it never flips off. Your success as an athlete is not where it should stop. Take your ability to train, focus, compete, and let it bleed into every other part of your life. And lastly, because I'm old and washed up, I get to say this now, uh, cherish it. Your time in a jersey, it, it will come to an end, so enjoy it. Um, and truly, for all of the other old and washed up folks in this room, uh, thank you for letting us be a part of the journey. It's, it's truly an honor. Thank you again, Abby. Really appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, so fortunate to have people like Abby in our community uh, who grew up here, who comes back here and, and makes an impact with us. So I uh, appreciate you, Abby. Um, we're going to uh, move on. I would like to introduce our uh, MC for the uh, rest of the ceremony. Uh, we are so lucky to have um, a reporter from Nine News with us today. Uh, she has been an integral part of this uh, celebration for the last three or four years. Uh, she, she just brings a lot of energy and just, uh, you may have seen her, um, uh, you know, she follows the Avs, the Nuggets, prep report, she does everything for them. So uh, let me give you a little uh, history on Ariel. Uh, Ariel Sudo, um, sports reporter and anchor for Nine News. She previously worked uh, in Wichita, Kansas, and KOTA Territory News in Rapid City, South Dakota. 
She's a proud graduate of the University of Miami, and she is a native of South Jersey and Philadelphia. In her spare time, Arielle is a fitness junkie and a certified personal trainer. She enjoys hiking, recreational sports, and functional fitness. Arielle grew up playing soccer and running track through high school. The camaraderie and conversation surrounding sports are what keep Ariel excited about following athletics. Now, Ariel wants to continue those conversations through her stories and learn more about the athletes that play each sport and the people who support them. If we give a big warm welcome to Ariel Asuda from Nine News, please. Thank you. you want to hold her? You want it in there? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll walk and talk. I'm Italian. We kind of walk with our hands. You know, I was going to wear the, the heels you were wearing, but, you know, I just didn't want to look too tall. So I was watching the video, and I saw the uh, flag, before I start talking, this is, this is, I was watching the video, I saw the flag football. Has anyone out there played flag football for the school? No? That was just like, that, yeah, there we go. So I just started playing flag football this past year in my 30s. If I was playing flag football in high school, it would have been over. <laughs> we didn't have that opportunity, though. That's actually really cool that you guys get to play that. I'm really jealous. Um, but I've been doing this now for like the past three or four years. This is an awesome, awesome event that we get to be doing here to celebrate all of you. It is a fantastic thing. Just to be able to hear all of your stories, find out who's playing flag football, who's doing all these really cool things. I absolutely love just being able to meet each and every one of you, be able to shake all of your hands and just be up here, just celebrating girls and women in sports. It's amazing. You know, you were just talking about Title IX. That's actually really what I want to get back to because this past June, it was only just this past June that we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Title IX. I know we talked a lot about this last year. You guys weren't here last year, though. And so it was only just this past June, 50 years ago, that we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Title IX, where girls and boys finally had equal access to sports and to education, everything, where there was no more discrimination just based on the, on the basis of sex. It's wild. I and mean, there's some people in this room who can actually remember that time before Title IX, when each of us were not just able to do the same things, where we couldn't just go out there and play soccer, play basketball, have the same locker rooms, have the same access to everything. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing that now we don't even have to think about that. And so it just, it just doesn't get lost on us. And, you know, Abby, you just talked all about that. It's just, I wanted to kind of just take a moment to say that we're so lucky we're so lucky that we don't even have to worry about that, but to not, get, not allow it to get lost on us. There's all those pioneers of Title IX that we celebrate, that they paved the way for us, to allow us to have this moment to celebrate girls and women in sports. Right now, though, it's cool to be a girl and a woman in sports. They are actually the superheroes in sports. So instead of having to just fight and scrap and everything to get that equal access, now they're the ones that are on top of the world. Think about the US women's national team. Do you ever think about the US men's national team for soccer? I know I don't. <laughs> but in soccer, those women are the superheroes. Think about Megan Rapino. I mean, that, that image that we all have when she was that's the image we think about when we think about soccer in the United States. We think about Alex Morgan, who just got her 200th cap yesterday. We don't even think about the men on the other side. That's amazing. These are superheroes. There's four of them on that team from right here in Colorado. And shout out Mountain Vista for Mal Pugh, by the way. Sorry about that. You know, you got to play to the audience over there. There's four of them from Colorado. The best athlete in the state of Colorado is a woman. She's a skier, by the way. So we don't have any of those professionals in here in the room, but you know. Michaela Schifrin is the best athlete in all of Colorado, the best skier in the world, and she's a woman. And it's cool to be a woman skiing in skiing. But we have, a, we have a superhero flying down the slopes. And it doesn't matter who she is. But damn right, she's a woman. And right now in Colorado, we have the CU women's basketball team 
who is dominating, who's ranked, who's going to be possibly hosting one of the, the tournaments here. The CU men aren't doing that. So we have these superheroes we can be looking up to. We have broadcasters. We have female sportscasters. We have all these women in sports who are actually making it cool to be a woman. Right now at the Super Bowl, we had Rihanna bringing in the most watched Super Bowl halftime show. And that was for the Super Bowl, but a woman up there doing that. We have Lizzo talking about bad chick o'clock. You know, it's all of this. It's cool. It's great. It's powerful to be a woman in sports. No longer are we scrapping. Are we trying to get anything, trying to get the equal access? Instead, we're setting the bar. And that is what we're celebrating here. All of each of every, every one of you setting the bar to be the best in your field. And each and every one of you is the best here today. Talk about the 2%. 2% just in the district, you guys are the top 1% right now, to me, in my heart. <laughs> Didn't say I was good at math. <laughs> she said I was good at inspiring. <laughs> Where are we going here? Back to here? Okay. All right. I just want to give you guys all a round of applause, though. I want each of you to give yourselves a round of applause just for being here, because this is just an awesome day to celebrate each and every one of you. and all of your accomplishments. And now to one of my favorite women. T.R. Ellis, she's one of my presenters today with me, alongside me. T.R.'s coaching journey began in 1979 in Amarillo, Texas, where she was the eighth grade girls volleyball, basketball, and track coach. In the early 90s, she joined the coaching staff at Douglas County High School, and then in 1997, opened Chaparral, running the volleyball program there for 18 years, retiring after the 2014 season. During her coaching career, she has earned two state championships, an undefeated season, six state, elite, six state elite eight and higher, over 10 district league championships, and hung the first volleyball banner in the DC gym. She has coached two Gatorade Players of the Year, five All-Americans, and one National Player of the Year. TR has been named Colorado Coach of the Year multiple times, along with the Chassa Coach of the Year. And she was inducted into the Chassa Hall of Fame in 2017 and the Chassa Hall of Fame in 2021. TR continues to stay involved with high school athletics, volunteering with Chassa and working at the state volleyball tournament every year. TR, can you just stand up and we'll just give you a round of applause. All right, Castle View and Castle Rock, you're on deck. So please line up at the side of the stage. We skipped over the page, didn't we? What's that? We skipped over the, the Abby page, right? So we're gonna go right here. Yeah, go right there. Yeah. Yeah. Douglas County School District and the Foundation for Douglas County Schools are pleased to honor five schools and middle school athletes from each feeder. Girls from each of the high schools have found great success in competing across the state and sometimes the nation. They represent their school, school district, and communities with talent and class. Our middle school athletes have demonstrated their commitment to athletics and academics while demonstrating excellent sportsmanship. We're pleased to be able to honor these exceptional athletes today. Please hold your applause until each of the schools are done. We'll applaud the entire group at the same time, if you don't mind. Thank you. I will chaparral and Sierra, by the way, you're on deck, so please line up at the side of the stage. And we're gonna start with Castleview High School. Mariana Bokes is a four-time letter winner in track and field and cross country. She's a two-time team captain for both sports. She holds the school record for the 800 meter and four by 400 and was a state qualifier. Mariana has earned an outstanding first year athlete, dedicated player participant and Sabercat awards. She earned a 4.1 GPA and three-time academic first team all state member. She's also a member of NHCS, NHS, and the Sabercat Athletic Te Leadership Team, as well as the president of the Best Buddies program at Castleview. Mariana will compete in cross country and track at Cal State Long Beach. Grace Coyne is a member of the POMS team. She's a two-year varsity captain, three-year varsity member, and a state and national finalist. She carries a 4.29 GPA and is an academic first team and state member. 
Grace was awarded an AP Scholar with Distinction and is a member of NHS and the co-president of the Sabercat Athletic Leadership Team. She plans on studying pre-med at college in California. Sam Hughes is a member of the basketball and lacrosse teams. She's lettered in basketball two years and lacrosse for four years. She's the 2022 All-American First Team All-Conference and All-State and is a two-time team captain in lacrosse. She was also a member of the 16 and 18U USA National Lacrosse Development Team and Adrenaline Lacrosse All-American Team. Sam carries a 3.5 GPA and is a member of the Sabercat Athletic Leadership Team and Denver City Lacrosse Board. She loves drawing, digital art, and ceramic projects. She will study art and play lacrosse at the University of Florida. Oh, this is tough for me. Go Gators! <laughs> Gianna Kopp is a member of the volleyball team and a two-time varsity letter recipient. She's a two-time academic All-State First Team and earned the Commitment to Excellence Award. Gianna carries a 3.9 GPA and is a member of NHS, Link Crew Freshman Orientation Volunteer, New Student Ambassador, CV Media, Spanish Medical Team, and Participation in Education First Team Travel, First Travel Abroad Program. Gianna pl plans to get her medical at, uh, esthetician license in March, March 2024, then major in biology at SDSU and pursue dermatology. Riley McNeil has been a member of basketball, lacrosse, and track and field teams all four years of her high school career. In basketball, she's a three-time team captain, all-league honoree, and MVP. For lacrosse, Riley is a team captain and all-league honoree. In track and field, she's a two-time team captain and state qualifier in shot and discus. Riley carries a, a 4.27 GPA and has earned all state academic honors all four years. She's a member of NHS and Spanish NHS, STEM Girls Club, Link Crew, Student Government, and is co-president of Sabercat Athletic Leadership Team. Yes, she's done it all. She will attend the University of Chicago to study math and compete in track and field. Now you may applaud. Now we're happy to honor five excellent Castle Rock Middle School athletes. Katie Hewsome is a multi-sport athlete playing basketball, football, track, and volleyball. Katie's the hardest worker on the field. She never gives up and always leads by example. Sienna Mandrioli is an outstanding young student athlete. She's currently a multi-sport athlete in cross country and track and is a two-year qualifier for cross country districts. She's also a National Junior Honor Society member and is a positive leader and has the ability to get her team motivated. Caroline Mello is absolutely wonderful and excels in cross country, basketball, and track. She constantly has a positive attitude and is able to spread cheer in the classroom and in her sporting events. She pushes herself to the limits and is a perfect example of a student athlete. Peyton Milstein is a fantastic and energetic multi-sport athlete in basketball and track and gives 100% in everything she does and is always eager to learn and improve on and off the court. She's extremely motivated and determined to do her best in all that she does. Annalise Seeley is an amazingly talented multi-sport athlete excelling in basketball, football, and track, a true leader on and off the, the court and the field, always willing to step up and meet the challenges head on. She never gives up until the final whistle and has a positive attitude in all of her accomplishments. Uh, before we give, an, give our applause, Douglas County and Mesa, you're on deck. Please line up at the side of the stage. Now we may applaud. Chaparral High School has selected five outstanding athletes to be honored. Keegan Armetta could not be here today. As the captain of her volleyball team, Mackenzie Brandon led her team to the state tournament Elite Eight. She won second team All-League her junior year and first team All-League her senior year. She holds a four-point GPA and was on the honor roll for seven semesters. Mackenzie is described as a quiet leader, hardworking, and meticulous continually striving to make herself better in the classroom and lead by example on the court. Mackenzie hasn't decided on where she will be heading in the fall. She plans to study biochem or pre-med wherever she goes. Mackenzie Brandon. Oh, hold your applause, please. 
although Mackenzie. <laughs> Brooke Cody. Brooke is a four-year letter winner in cheer. She carries a 3.6 GPA and is a senior team co-captain. She has won academic all-state honorable mention the last three years and helped her team win runner-up at nationals and worlds in 2019, 2020, as well as state runner-up in 2020 and 2021. Brooke has earned a four-year letter in student government and was class vice president for three years. Brooke is described as hardworking, diligent, and mindful of her own success. Brooke plans to attend the University of Oklahoma or Colorado State in the fall, study in early education with a minor in special education, and hopes to continue her cheerleading career. Aiden Covington. Aiden is a four-year letter winner in academics, cross country, and track. Three sports, wow. She carries a 3.9 GPA and is co-captain of her cross country and track teams. She received first team all league in 2020, competed in state three of the four, competed in, in state three of the four years for cross country and received the underclass female athlete of the year award in 2021. Aiden is part of the student government, helping make a wish a huge success. She is described as intelligent, thoughtful, inclusive, and a natural born leader. Aiden will be attending Colorado State University in Fort Collins to study biology with a focus in genetics. Emma Lehman. Emma is a four-year letter winner in Palms. As the team captain this year, she won the All-American Award. Emma participates in National Honor Society, student government, where she is a four-year letter winner. Student body personal relations commissioner and won an All-State Academic Award. Emma carries a 3.8 GPA and plans to attend either the University of Colorado or Missouri or Oklahoma, where she will study film and continue her career in dance. Emma Lehman. We are happy to honor five excellent Sierra Middle School athletes. Neve Calavente participated in both volleyball and wrestling this year. As the only female on the wrestling team, her hard work and dedication outperformed the rest of the team. Even after being injured, she showed up and cheered on her teammates and helped them to be better. A true sportsman. Tatum Long. Tatum has put her full effort into both volleyball and basketball this year. She was a leader on both of her teams and showed great strides as a volleyball player to move up a level. After the season, she showed how great of a role model she is as she helped out with tryouts and practice for the seventh grade volleyball team. Gwen Telford. Gwen was a positive leader for the entire cross country team and basketball team. She always had a smile and a joke for everyone on the team while still pushing herself and others to do their best. Riley Weber. Riley has shown true integrity and leadership during her athletic career. She played volleyball, football, and basketball this year and helped lead Sierra 8th grade girls basketball team to their first district championship in seven years. A round of applause for the Sierra Middle School athletes, please. Highlands Ranch and Crest Hill, you are in deck, so please line up at the side of the stage. Oh no, my worst fear. Oh, oh Salem. Oh my gosh, all right. Salem Sherman. Let me say it again, Salem Sherman. <laughs> Salem is a three-sport athlete who always has a positive attitude. She helped lead flag football, there's your flag football girl, and eighth grade girls basketball to a district championship, Salem Sherman.
All right, Douglas, I'm gonna lower this just a tad bit. Douglas County High School is proud to honor five talented athletes. Channing Bauer carries a 3.97 GPA, was a four-year letter winner for the softball team, and a four-year academic scholar athlete. Channing helped lead her team to the Class 5A state championship game this year, best record in school history. She was second team all-conference in 2019, honorable mention all-conference in 2020, first team all-conference and second team all-state in 2022. Channing was a CCC... CCGS All-State Senior Game nominee and a, and a CHSCA All-State Softball nominee. Her coach says Channing is a natural leader, a positive role model, and an incredible teammate. She's the epitome of a well-rounded student athlete. Not only does she excel in the softball field, she excels inside the classroom as well. Channing has strived to get better every day, pushing her teammates to do the same. At this time, Channing is undecided on her career, on her career plans. Brady Green carries a 4.06 GPA while leading the girls basketball team to a very successful season. Brady was varsity girls basketball captain in 2022 and three-year academic All-State athlete. Brady was named Continental League Honorable Mention in 2021. Brady's basketball coach says Brady brings an amazing competitive drive to our basketball program. It's been a joy to watch her develop into a leader and a role model. In 2022, Brady received the Husky Paw Award from English Department as the top junior, student at, junior English student of the year and as a four-time DECA state qualifier. Brady plans to attend the University of Tennessee. Cassidy Green carries a 4.02 GPA while participating in basketball and soccer. She's been a four-year Scholar Athlete Award recipient, as well as a five-time varsity letter recipient. This year, Cassidy was honored as the Nine News Play of the Week. Her coach says Cassidy is a wonderful leader. Day in and day out, she shows up to work hard to become a better player at her sport. In addition to that, she encourages others around her to work hard as well. Cassidy is not just a talented athlete. She also participates in Link Crew, DECA, and National Honor Society. Cassidy plans to attend Texas Tech University in the fall and pursue a major in business. Mia Radford carries a 4.26 GPA while participating in both cross country and track. She's a seven time varsity letter winner, will be eight in track, two time team captain, five time state qualifier, school record holder in the four by 800 meter relay, podium finisher in the 2022 state track meet, and is a pivotal member of the 2020 league championship winning team, the first title in school history. Mia has been an unbelievable leader for the cross country team and was instrumental in turning the program into what it is today. She is the highest finish of a captain at a state meet in the cross country team's history. She embodies everything a coach looks for in an athlete and, her, and a leader. Her hard work, dedication, and commitment to the program and to her teammates set her apart from most. I would say so. Marina T uh, Tenari. Marina Tenari is not able to join us today. Please. We are pleased to honor five excellent Mesa Middle School athletes. Julie Allen is not able to join us today. Sophia Hummel is involved in basketball, volleyball, and track. She plays her heart out on the basketball court and is a tough competitor. Addison Jantz plays basketball, volleyball, and track. Addie perseveres through all things that come at her. She has a positive outlook and brings everyone around her such joy on and off the court. Megan Thorne is a basketball, volleyball, and track athlete. She's a great competitor with an uplifting spirit. She works hard, has a positive attitude, and is also a great student in the classroom. Faith Turnbaugh is involved in basketball, volleyball, and track. Faith is a kind person and is competitive on and off the court. Great in the classroom and in sports. You may also applause these. <laughs> Legend and Cimarron, you're on deck. Please line up at the side of the stage. Highland Ranch High School is proud to recognize the following outstanding athletes. Ella Blake. Ella carries a 3.8 GPA as a four-year honor roll member and received the Academic Excellence Award. She has been a three-year letter winner in the soccer program, two times Defensive Player of the Year, Captain's Award recipient, and has been selected as first team all-league member. She is a member of Student Senate and has been a part of the planning multiple events for her school. 
Ella is planning on playing Division II soccer in college, but is undecided where she might land. Daniela Cronford could not be with us today. Isabella Flindard. Isabel is a swim and team dive captain. She will let her all four years of her high school career and is qualified for state every year, placing in the top 10 in relays and individual events. As a student, Isabel is on the academic honor roll with an unweighted 4.0 GPA and is ranked second in her class. She has received the AP Scholar Award and Hispanic Recognition Award from the College Board. After high school, Isabel plans to go to college and study either biomedical engineering or neuroscience, but she is still undecided where. Ali Verstrate. Ali will be a three-year varsity letter winner in golf. She is a regional qualifier after placing fifth in the Continental League Tournament. She has made the honor roll every semester of her high school career and currently has a 3.95 GPA. She has been a link crew member for the last two years and a member of the St. Jude Leadership Society and a student senate board member all four years. Allie is going to attend school, college, in the South and wants to major in biochemistry. Brady Williamson. Brady has participated in soccer, basketball, and track over the span of her high school career. In track, she was on the state qualifying 4x4 team as a sophomore. In basketball, she played three years in which she lettered, won the Continental League Championship, and made it to the Final Four. In soccer, she won the Falcon Award as a sophomore, which represents leadership on and off the field, and was a starter her junior year. She has been on the honor roll every semester in high school and currently holds, holds a 3.87 GPA. She is the member of the Student Senate, Mu Alpha Theta, Math Honor Society, of course, and Blue Crew. After high school, she's going to college to study engineering. Please give a round of applause to Highlands Ranch High School athletes. We are pleased to honor five talented Crest Hill Middle School athletes. Ava Jensen. Ava is, basketball and is a basketball and volleyball athlete. Her kind smile, engaging personality, and overall work ethic has and will continue to be the example we share with future Crest Hill Cougars who want to know what it means to be amazing in this world. We are so proud of her and her of the representation that she has been for our school and community. Sammy, Sammy Lacombe. Sammy participates in volleyball and track and is hands down one of the hardest workers we have in our entire building. She exemplifies the type of character and drive that we desire for all of our student athletes and the incredibly high expectations we have for them. It has been an honor to have Sammy represent Crest Hill in all that she does and who she is as a young woman. Lily McFarland. Our Crest Hill teachers, volleyball coaches, and administration have repeatedly expressed how blessed we feel to have had our lives made better because of the inspirational influence of Lily McFarland. Her joy, compassion, sincerity, and generosity of spirit has left an undeniable mark of greatness upon all she has come into contact with. Lily McFarland. Sutton Persikina. Sutton is a cross country and volleyball athlete. One of our favorite quotes at Crest Hill is this, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Sutton soulfully embraces that quote as motivation to give her absolute very best at every single moment of her life. She is a shining example of honoring the gifts she's been given and how they influence those around her. Sutton Persikina. Evelyn Welling. Evelyn runs cross country and track. If kindness could be bottled and given to the world, it would be packaged with the name Evelyn Welling. Evelyn is a regular contributor to the type of empathetic, caring, and supporting culture we want in our building. Her heart for people and loving spirit leave a lasting legacy for all of us at Crest Hill. Let's give a round of applause to our Crest Hill Middle School athletes. Mountain Vista and Mountain Ridge, you are on deck, so please line up 
on the side of the stage. Legend High School is proud to recognize five talented athletes. Jocelyn Barris is a four-year golf letter winner, letter winning earner, second year all continental league in her sophomore year, and first team all continental league her junior year while helping her team to fifth and eighth place state finishes. We're excited to see where her senior year will lead in golf. While maintaining a 3.7 GPA, Jocelyn is a member of National English Honor Society, National Science Honor Society, National Honor Society, Shine, and is a DECA state qualifier and a valuable member of Legend Student Government. She tackles all of this with a positive can-do attitude and her infectious smile demonstrates all to all others to have fun on whatever journey they can take. Taylor Eddy embodies the three C's in leading our girls' tennis team. Caring, courageous, and consistent. Her bright personality and strong work ethic is contagious and has made her a valuable S asset to the Legend girls, girls' Tennis Program. This work ethic paid off as Taylor was the first tennis player at Legend to qualify for the state tournament and has managed to make back-to-back -back appearances with a goal of the third state qualification in her upcoming senior season. Her dedication is evident on the court, as well as in the classroom, as she has been recognized as an academic all-state first-team achiever. Taylor loves the game and is excited to see where her senior season holds. Gemma Gibbs carries a 3.8 GPA while taking AP classes and has received CHASA all-academic all academic honors, all while being on the honor roll four years in a row. During her time at Legend, she's lettered in basketball four times. According to her coach, Gemma has shown tremendous growth as a player and as a person over the last few years. As a senior, she's the heartbeat of our team and an outstanding leader. Gemma volunteers for the Parker Food Bank and assists in a number of youth basketball camps. She plans on studying marketing and has been accepted to Arizona State, Arizona, and CU Boulder and will be making her decision soon. Emma Harrington finished up her fourth year as a starter for the Legends softball team. This past season, she received first-team all-conference honors, along with the second-team all-state honors. Her coach says Emma is a positive role model and carries herself with confidence and grace. She plays softball at a very elite level and always shows the world her never-quit attitude. I have thoroughly enjoyed and was honored to have coached Emma for these past four years. Emma has committed to continue her academic and athletic career at the University of Northern Colorado. Sonia Mali is a three-year cross-country and track varsity athlete, as well as a captain of both teams. She's a, has a 4.16 student, she's, she is a 4.16 student athlete who has taken eight, eight AP courses during her time at Legend and made principal honor roll every year. Sonia embodies what it means to be a leader and has been honored twice as a Titan Award recipient. She's smart, kind, and leads with integrity and courage. It's been rewarding to have her on our team, watching her mentor our younger runners. Sonia loves to sing and is a member of the choir. After she graduates in May, she plans to attend college and major in chemistry. She wants to get her PhD and become a clinical researcher. You, now you may applaud. Please join us in honoring five great athletes from the Cimarron Middle School. Jane Jorgensen is a very enthusiastic about both athletics and learning. She's a lighthearted with the ability to make kids laugh. Hayden Fluger is, quiet, is, is, a quiet, is a quiet leader who works extremely hard at everything she does. She shows exceptional amount of integrity both in the classroom and on the field. Abby Shillington ran cross country and always did her best. She's hardworking and very kind hearted. Gwyn Thews played on the basketball team. She's very kind hearted, hardworking and respectful athlete. Shaylin Workman has a very strong work ethic both in the classroom and on the field. She excels in everything she does and is always respectful towards both her peers and her teachers. Ponderosa and Sagewood, you're on deck. Please line up at the side of the stage. Five outstanding athletes from Mountain Vista High School are being honored today. Abby Ashlemelm has a 4.13 cumulative GPA. She has been the number one golfer at Mountain Vista the last two years. In those years, she's been first team all state in 2021 and 2022. 
She was the Continental League Golfer of the Year in 2021. She finished fourth in state 2022. Abby is also a member of the National Honor Society. Abby will continue her playing career next year at Creighton University, where she received a golf, golf scholarship. Rachel Blair. Rachel is a 4.25 cumulative GPA. Rachel has developed into one of the most versatile track athletes in the state, posting impressive numbers in everything from the 100 meter to the 800 meter, as well as hurdles and multiple field events. Not only did Rachel qualify for the 2022 state championship in six individual events and four relays, she made the podium for all four events that she contested. That was the 100, the 200, the 400, and the four by two, the anchor, of course. Her natural athletic ability has put her on the path to become a heptathlete where she will compete in seven events, which, can, which is the 100, the hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200, long jump, javelin, and the 800. Wow. Rachel will be a force this year at the state track meet and continue her career at the University of Utah as a track and field athlete. Lauren Hayes. Lauren has a 3.95 cumulative GPA. She played volleyball and tennis. She's been the number one tennis player at Mountain Vista for the last three years and has been the Continental League Player of the Year the last two years. She is, the two -time, she is a two-time state qualifier and two-time first team all-conference. She's a member of the National Honor Society, student leadership, and orchestra. Lauren will be attending, as of last night, signed a letter of intent to play at Middleville University in Pennsylvania this fall on a tennis scholarship. Congratulations. Talia Reading. Talia has a 4.25 GPA. She is a three-sport athlete comp competing in field hockey, girls basketball, and girls lacrosse. She was a first-team all-conference and all-state in field hockey and led the team to the playoffs as the team captain. She is a three-time letter winner in girls basketball and the team captain. In girls lacrosse, she was first-team all-conference, first-team all-state, team captain, and the Continental League Defensive Player of the Year. She is also the student body vice president and is a member of the National Honor Society. She will be continuing her academic and athletic career in Northwestern this fall as a member of their lacrosse team. Annie Romalia. Annie has a 4.24 cumulative GPA. Annie was a member of our four state qualifying teams in cross country. This team finished top four every year of her tenure and finished second this past year. She was first team all conference in 2020 and 2022, and her teams were four time Continental League champs. She also was a key member of the 2020 and 2022 Running Lane National Team Champions. She is a great team leader, and the team could not have accomplished what it has so far without her. She is undecided on her future plans, as she has many options awaiting her. Round of applause for the Mountain Vista High School athletes. We are honoring five wonderful athletes from Mountain Ridge Middle School. Kaylee Bess. Kaylee was involved in flag football, basketball, and track. Kaylee was one of the top throwers for track and was recognized for her willingness to take on challenges in football. She was one of only five girls on the seventh grade flag football team and as a first time player showed the courage to step up and play quarterback when no one else would do it. a girl. Kaylee's moment of athletic pride is being nominated for this award, and her goal in high school is to become, a more, seri become more serious about sports. Liv Johnson. Liv has been involved in volleyball, cross country, running club, and track. Liv's coaches enjoy her leadership and can-do attitude. She is positive and encouraging to all athletes, including those from other schools. At the 2022 District Cross Country Championship, Liv was a scoring runner for the team. Liv has maintained a 4.0 GPA. Her greatest moment of pride in her middle school athletics was placed in 13th at Regional Cross Country, which was her last race before going in for surgery on her hip. She is looking forward to running for Mountain Vista. Kaylee Cast. 
Kaylee or Kylie? Kaylee Cast has dedicated her time to the cross country running club and track along with mountain biking. Kaylee is fearless. She tackles practices and races with courage and confidence, always showing ways to improve. At the 2022 District Cross Country Championship, Kaylee placed third overall. Kaylee's proudest athletic achievement was placing 36th in the 1314 girls at the 2021 AAU Cross Country Nationals. Next year, she is looking forward to training with the Mountain Vista Cross Country team. Although Zoe Prowitt didn't attend Mountain Ridge until the eighth grade, she immediately made a positive impact on her volleyball team. After the eighth grade season ended, she quickly jumped into a position of student assistant coach support for the seventh grade girls volleyball team. Zoe is extremely motivated with everything she does. Students look up to her in volleyball and in class. Next year, she's looking forward to playing for Mountain Vista High School. Emma Wagner could not join us today. Round of applause for the Mountain Ridge Middle School athletes. Rock Canyon and Rocky Heights, you are on deck. Ponderosa High School is proud to honor five excellent athletes. London Hunter carries a 3.9 GPA and is a two-time academic letter winner. She's a four-year varsity letter recipient in tennis and has been named team captain for two years. She was a state qualifier as a sophomore and named to the team MVP as a junior. London is a part of Mu Alpha Theta, student council and Stang Gang, student cheer section leadership group. The National Honor Society and as well as the National Honor Society. London's coach says London is a leader for our women's tennis team, whether she's on or off the court. Her encouraging and competitive spirit shines brightly. This summer she will be working in, in Stagway, Alaska, and then hopes to attend the University of Utah or the Colorado School of Mines. Ryan Kennett is a three-year letter winner and two-year state qualifier in track. She placed fourth in the 300 meter hurdles and eighth in the 100 meter hurdles her sophomore year and placed seventh in the 300 meter hurdles, eighth in the 100 meter hurdles and eighth in the medley relay her junior year. She maintains a 4.2 GPA and has been student of the month twice and earned three academic letters. Ryan also enjoys dirt biking, skiing, snowboarding, and horse riding. Ryan's coach says, Ryan is a once in a career type athlete. Most track athletes are motivated, but Ryan is determined to be the best in her event. Her competitive drive and focus is unique for a high school athlete. Ryan will attend the Colorado School of Mines for biochemistry while competing in track. Alora Rankin is a four-year varsity cheer and track athlete and a two-year cheer, cap cheer team captain. In cheer, she was a state runner-up, four-year All-American, and the London New Year's Day Parade twice, a CH CHSCA All-State Cheerleader and first team academic All-State athlete. In track, she placed ninth at state in the pole vault and currently holds the school record. Alora is a member of Student Council, the Athletic Council, SAG, PAG, National Honor Society, National Art Honor Society, and DECA, where she recently placed first. She holds a 4.16 GPA and earned two academic letters. Alora's cheer coach says, Alora is fiercely competitive, holds herself and her teammates to a high standard, and raises the bar for everyone on the team. Alora plans to cheer in college while studying business. Maggie Schuchholz is a four-year Palms member and leader. She's been named a UDA All-American 2022-23 All-Colorado Dance Team and top 10 at state and UDA Nationals. She currently holds a 4.03 GPA and is a member of the National Honor Society and was named Academic All-State First Team. She's a member of student council and volunteers for a number of different organizations. Maggie's coach says, I have never witnessed a more kind-hearted and hardworking athlete who has helped turn this program into the most positive team culture I've ever been a part of. After high school, Maggie hopes to dance at the University of Pittsburgh while studying kinesiology. Kaylee Spall is a three-year girls basketball letter winner, two-time two, two second team all-conference and first team academic all-state athlete. She was named a 2022 USJN All-Star and 2022 Rocky Mountain Mayhem Top Performer. Kaylee maintains a 3.95 GPA and has been named the Student of the Month twice by the World Language and Mathematics Department, has lettered academically twice as well. 
Kaylee's coach says Kaylee's the type of athlete that every coach would love to have in their program. She works hard, is extremely coachable, and is a leader on and off the floor. She puts the team over herself every game. Kaylee will attend Doan University in Crete, Nebraska to further her academic and athletic career. We are also honoring five outstanding middle school athletes from Sagewood Middle School. Ryland Kraft is a great student athlete who plays both volleyball and track and participates in the school yearbook. She also participates in 4-H activities for dogs outside of school. She is a very kind and friendly person who shows pride, our school's motto, in all that she does. Genevieve's uh, Gia Genovese is a Terminator type machine. This year alone, she has participated in our cross country team, our basketball team, and hopefully our track team too. She's a very respective, she's very respected by her teammates and is expected to be the team captain in a few years. Shay Hayden, Shay Hayden, excuse me. Shay Hayden is a very gifted athlete. She is a talented basketball player who works hard and is respected by her teammates. She also participates in track and volleyball and does all of this while maintaining excellent grades. Marissa Lopez participates in cross country and track and has competed at both sports districts, district meets every year of middle school. Her niche is a long distance running and she trains outside of school by going on long runs as far as four miles or more. She's very respectable, kind and humble and is willing to help out wherever she can. Olivia Rodriguez is not able to join us today. Thunder Ridge and Ranch View, you're on deck. Please line up at the side of the stage. Rock Canyon High School is happy to honor five exceptional athletes. Avery Couton. Avery has been a four-year varsity chair member and two-year captain. She is a 2022 All-American, three-year state finalist, two-year national finalist, and a member of the 2020 state runner-up team. Avery earned a 4.0 GPA. She is a three-year state finalist for DECA and FBLA, a national finalist for FBLA, and a member of the NHS and UNICEF. Her cheer coach says, Avery's hard work Dedication and leadership are a tremendous asset to our team and our program. She is, true, she is a true example of what it means to be a Rock Canyon cheerleader. Avery plans to attend either CU Boulder or the University of South Carolina to study business and possibly continue cheerleading. Abby Gardner. Abby has been a four-year varsity swim team member. She is a four-time state qualifier and finalist in and a two-time 500 free league champion. Took third place in the 200 free twice at A League and has finished top five at state in the 200 and the 500 free. Abby has earned a 4.0 GPA. Her coach says, Abby is truly a champion in every sense of the word and is so deserving of this award. Abby represents her team, high school, and community with integrity and is respected by all who know her. Abby volunteers as a USA swim coach and participates in swim across America, Denver fundraising for critical cancer research at Children's Hospital. Abby will attend the University at Buffalo on a swim scholarship and plans to study exercise science. Jazzy Lorenz. Jazzy has been a phenomenal goalkeeper for the JAG soccer team, which has won the last two Continental League championships and was the state runner up in 2021. Her soccer coach says, Jazzy is an incredible competitor who never gives less than her best. She is one of the most coachable and humble players I've coached. She actively mentors young players and could not be a better role model. Jazzy maintains a 4.2 GPA and is involved in several clubs in, at school, including NHS, National English Honor Society, FBLA, where she is a national qualifier, and DECA, where she is a state qualifier. Jazzy was named Jag of the Month and Jag of the Year in 2021. Jazzy is committed to play Division I soccer next year at William & Mary. Avery Oates. Avery has been a four-year member of the Palms team, earning four Continental League championships, one JV state championship, 
two varsity state championships and one state runner-up finish and several top five finishes at UD Nationals. She has received an All-American Athlete Award, made the All-Colorado Spirit Team, and earned academic All-State. She maintains a 3.82 GPA and is a member of the National Honor Society and National English Honor Society. Her Palms coach says, Avery is one of the most well-rounded and committed athletes in our program. She puts her team's needs over her own and sets a great example for our young athletes. Avery plans on attending an SEC school majoring in fashion merchandising and product development. Audrey Ray. Audrey is a four-year member of the volleyball team and served as captain this year. Audrey earned Continental League first team honors, Colorado Coaches of Girls Sports All-State, and Colorado High School Coaches Association All-State Award. She was an instrumental part of the 2022 state runner-up volleyball team. She maintains a 4.12 GPA and is a two-time academic All-State first team selection, an AP scholar with honors, and a member of three honor societies. Audrey's coach says, Audrey is talented, smart, caring, kind, funny, and so much more. She leaves a lasting impact on those who know her. As her coach, I am beyond proud of her. Audrey is undecided on what school will be lucky enough to have her attending, hoping it's on the East Coast. A round of applause for the Rock Canyon athletes. We are also honoring the five fine athletes from Rocky Heights Middle School. Zoe Dermody. Zoe competed on the basketball and volleyball teams. Zoe is an all-around great athlete. She is a hustler. Always the first one to get dressed and out for practice and help set up the nets or get equipment out. She has a great attitude and is always positive, most certainly a team player. Liv Johansson competed on our unified sports teams. She is an exceptionally kind student who is always the first one to help out other, another student. She is a go-getter and perseveres through any task given her, whether when she is playing sports or in the classroom. She encourages other students and always finds the positive in, in people. Angela Coletta. Angela competed on the cross country and track, track teams. Angela is an incredible leader and team player both on and off the field. During cross country, Angela always worked hard, encouraged others, and helped lead stretches. She was an excellent role model for our younger athletes. Faith Miller. Faith completed on the flag football, volleyball, basketball, and track teams. Faith is one of those all-around athletes that are just awesome at everything. Faith always puts forth 110% at practice and during games. She is a very kind and respectful young lady. Carmen Rogers. Carmen is a unified athlete. She is a very kind student to everyone she meets. Even when she is worried about trying something new, she perseveres and tries it. This makes her stronger as a person and as an athlete. She is a dedicated athlete and is ready to participate with a smile on her face and determin determination to do her very best. Please give a round of applause to the Rocky Heights athletes. Thunder Ridge has chosen five talented athletes to honor today. Kira Cheney is a two-time tennis letter winner and four-time volleyball letter winner. In volleyball, she earned first-team All-League, second-team All-League, two-time captain, Golden Shoe Award for the most promising freshman, and, and, first, and team first award. She maintains a 4.3 GPA, earning first-team academic All-State, two-time academic letter, Along with the Underclassmen Award for English and Spanish, Kira plans to continue her athletic career playing volleyball at Haverford College, studying English and film. 
Kyra Daniels is an international student, student athlete who has complete, competed on the basketball court from Australia to Oregon to Colorado. While participating in Australia, Kyra was selected to the state team to represent Western Australia in the Australian Junior Championships national team. While playing in Oregon, Kyra was an all-state selection and was selected to the all-state tournament team for the Oregon State basketball team. Kyra is currently a 4.0 GPA and has achieved a 1460 on the SAT. Kyra will play NCAA Division I basketball at Missouri State University while studying sports medicine. McKenna Eppers has excelled as a two-sport athlete in field hockey and lacrosse. She's a four-year letter winner in lacrosse and a three-year letter winner in field hockey. She was the 2022 Thunder Ridge Lacrosse Team Offensive MVP and leading scorer, 2022 First Team All-Conference and Second Team All-State. She was the 2022 Field Hockey Captain, Field Hockey Offensive MVP, 2022 Field Hockey All-State Honorable Mention, and 2022 All-State Field Hockey Game Participant. McKenna maintains a 3.9 GPA. She's a member of the Denver City Lacrosse High School Leadership Board, a National Honor Society. McKenna will play NCAA Division I Lacrosse at Coastal Carolina University, majoring in kinesiology. Georgia Sierra is a softball player who started nearly every game at catcher over her four years at Thunder Ridge. She is known as one of the best defensive catchers in the Continental League. In her senior season, Georgia had a 349 batting average and a 482 on, on base percentage. Behind the plate, she had a 993 fielding percentage, making just one error the entire season. Only 17 runners attempted to steal against Georgia. Don't steal on her. She threw 47% of them out. She picked off another four runners. She was behind the plate for 2,500 pitchers this season and allowed pitches this season, I should say, and allowed just four pass balls. She earned all league second team and academic all state honorable mention. Georgia will continue her, her athletic career playing NCAA Division II softball for Shadron State University. Emmy Sullivan has been a leader for the Thunder Ridge soccer program while being a leading voice in her community. Emmy earned two-year two All-League First Team and is a three-year Varsity Letter winner and a member of the 2022 Academic All-State First Team, maintaining a 3.7 GPA. She's a president of SCORE, Students Coalition of Racial Equality, and will continue her athletic career playing NCAA Division I soccer at Lamar University. We are also honoring five great athletes from Ranchview Middle School. Colby Behrens participates in multiple sports and is one of the best teammates Ranchview has ever seen. Injured for all but one game in the eighth grade basketball season, Colby still showed up every day to help at practice and cheer her teammates at, at games. She's extremely coachable and a wonderful leader in and out of the classroom. Whether it's cross country, volleyball, basketball, track, Kylie Bell Nielsen has represented Ranchview more than any other student athlete during her two years. Outside of school, she's involved in youth group and played piano since she was five years old, all while maintaining honor roll. Savannah Payne is not able to join us today. Avery Robbins knows what it takes to be a student athlete. She succeeds in volleyball, basketball, and track and maintains high academic grades. Avery is a leader in our Ranchview Student Council and is very coachable and a great teammate. Competitive and high achieving, Adeline Zentner outscored all other female athletes representing Ranchview at the district track meet last year and has made it a goal to do it again, again this year. She was team captain for volleyball and maintains her place on the honor roll. Adeline is a great teammate and looks to make those around her even better. All right, thank you all for joining us here today. In closing, I just want to say just another huge congratulations to everyone here today. Just another round of applause to everyone here. And if you guys don't mind, just let's just give it up for the parents, the coaches, just anybody who is just a, an integral member of these people that were able to get us here today. Everything that we honored you guys here today, all of these paragraphs that we read, they are so incredibly impressive. Um, but just keep in mind, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of a huge, huge chapter of your lives. 
you guys are going on, especially the high schoolers, you guys are going on to do such incredible things. Um, high school is such a huge part of your lives, I know that. Um, but everything from this point on is just the beginning. You are going on to do such amazing things in either college or your careers, whatever you choose next. Um, sports or just the foundation. Um, it's so funny, whenever they read my bio, I always laugh when they say like, oh, she played soccer and track in high school. Like, um, I, I was barely an athlete, like absolutely barely an athlete. I am basically, I like to say that I, I, I played sports for a little while, but more so I then did theater and did journalism and that kind of all came into being who I am now. But all of that kind of formed me into who I am. So my high school was like just this tiny, 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 tiny little piece that made this huge platform for what I'm able to do. So just think about that. Even if you're like the best, best, best basketball, softball, soccer player right now, that's just the beginning of what you're able to then like springboard into the future. So just keep that in mind that this is just the beginning. You're going on to do amazing things. So I just can't wait to see it. I can't wait, that, that's, that's what I love to do. I tell stories, I observe, I'm a historian, and then I tell these stories. So I just can't wait to go on to see what each, each and every one of you goes on to do and then tell your story. That's what makes me so excited about all of this. I'm like, oh my God, I've read that person's bio. Like five years from now, I'm like, I can't believe that they went on to go do this, but then it's just, it's amazing. So I can't wait to see how successful successful each and every one of you are. And then the middle schoolers that we just talked about, boy, I'm excited about you guys because you guys are already doing so many incredible things and you're so young. I know you hate to hear that, but you are, you're so young. So the potential is so ripe there. So I'm just so excited and I'm so happy that I got to meet each and every one of you, even for just a brief moment. So thank you for letting me be here today just to be, um, just to witness your greatness. And just once again, thank you. You guys are incredible. I really appreciate you all. Okay, um, that pretty much concludes our luncheon for today. I want to uh, thank everyone for coming. I uh, appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know students, it's, it's a, an off day for you and your friends and peers might be doing other things. So we appreciate you coming here and, and taking the time to get recognized. We really enjoy doing it. Uh, one more shout out to my, uh, all the athletic directors as well um, in the building. Um, if, if ADs, if you could just stand, middle school and high school ADs, please stand and be recognized at this point. <laughs> You know, they, they put in countless hours. Uh, it, it's the running joke at three o'clock. That's half time for us, right? So we, uh, we, we go till nine or 10 at night, but uh, just appreciate all you guys do as well. So uh, that, that concludes our ceremony. We, we are a little early. And, and so if uh, any of you want to, I'm gonna offer if you wanna talk to Ariel or superintendent a little bit or a board member, myself, whatever, we'll be around for a little bit, but uh, appreciate you guys being here and uh, have a great weekend. <laughs>